Hello again and welcome to the last lesson on scripting. This lesson is slightly different than the other ones because we'll be looking at a real world challenge and then as a second part we'll be looking at another scripting language called Groovy. First to the challenge. The challenge is basically from an annual shootout of the Council for Near Infrared Spectroscopy and the shootout process basically works as follows. You basically build your data on the training data, which is called calibration in near infrared spectroscopy terms. You evaluate your model on the separate data set, which is the test data set. And then you basically generate and submit predictions in the shootout process. However, we don't do the last step of submitting any predictions because that particular challenge has already finished. But we're still going to use the data that's publicly available at the link below that you can download and then run. What are you going to do? Well, first you're going to download the CSV files for dataset 1 and 2. Just going to go on the website here. So here's dataset 1 and 2. And for each one of them, you download the CSV files. And you only need the calibration and the test set. We don't need the validation one. And then you generate basically data for Weka in R format for building the model, calibration, and then for evaluating the model, the test set. The class attribute in the calibration data set is called reference value, and you shouldn't include the sample number in your model. This is basically now up to you to come up not only with the proper data set and that they're compatible, training and test set, but you should also then try and come up with a good regression scheme for predicting the reference values. But what do you have to beat? Well, in our case, you have to beat on dataset 1 a correlation coefficient of 0.8644 and a root mean square error of 0.384. And on dataset 2, you have to beat a correlation coefficient of 0.9986 and a root mean squared error of 0 0.0026. Up for the challenge? Good luck! Now to the second part of using Groovy, another scripting language. As I already mentioned in the introduction, Groovy also runs in the JVM and can be installed through the package manager as well. If you haven't done so already, please open up the package manager and um, install the KF Groovy package. Doesn't matter what version. Uh, KF for knowledge flow Groovy. I've already done that and I'm going to show you basically what the interface looks like. So once again, just like with the Jython console, you'll find a Groovy console menu item under the tools menu in the GUI chooser. And once you've opened up that, you'll find the appearance of the Groovy console very much similar to that of the Jython console. Like on the top, you basically write your script and at the bottom, you'll see the output. However, in the Groovy console, you cannot use multiple tabs. You'd have to sort of like open multiple instances. But for our purposes, that's sufficient. Now, before we're going to start, um, just a few minor Groovy basics. So the grammar of Groovy is derived from Java, but with the exceptions, you don't have to write any semicolons to finish a line, which makes it much nicer. Um, def for definition basically defines a variable. You don't have to require um, any types or anything. Lists are very similar to the Python ones. Um, square brackets and just comma separated can be mixed types. Maps are also very similar to the Python ones, um, what they're called dictionaries in Python. However, you don't use curly brackets, you still use um, square brackets. And Groovy also enhances the Java syntax. For example, you have multi-line strings by using triple single quotes. You can use string interpolation. You can also have default imports of commonly used packages like Java Lang, Java IO, Java.net and so on. And last but not least, closures. They are not quite the same as Java 8 lambdas, um, but they are a very powerful tool. They are basically anonymous code blocks which can take parameters and return values as well and can be assigned to variables. If you want to look at some differences between Java and Groovy, then follow the link. One really funky thing about Groovy that I very much like is looping. Of course, you will have the standard Java for loop and while loop, 
but you can also use since everything is an object in Groovy, you can also use some additional methods called up to times and step as long as you have number objects like integers and so on. So if you look at up to, if you have 0 dot up to 10, that basically outputs all the numbers from 0 to 10, both included. If you do times, for example, 5 dot times, that basically outputs the numbers from 0 to 5 with 5 excluded. So it outputs the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And last but not least, you can also step through. So if you have 0 dot step, 10 comma 2 that means you're going from 0 to 10 at a step 2 so it outputs basically the numbers 0 2 4 6 and 8 okay so with the basics out of the way we're going to dive into writing one of the scripts that we've already seen previously in Jython and python by Carapa, and we're going to make some predictions with a build classifier so once again as always we're going to have some imports and just similar to Jive, and we're just going to import the whole classes. Um, we once again do the trick with our environment variable. However, here we use system.get environment. Then we're loading our training data. So once again, using the MOOC underscore data environment variable, using our shortcut variable, and loading the anneal train data set, setting the class attribute as once again as the last one. And we're also loading in the unlabeled data and setting the class as well. Now we're going to instantiate a J48. We're going to set some options. There's a minor difference here to um, Jython. You actually have to specify that this is a string array. So even though you have a list of strings, um, you just have to say what you actually want to cast it to. And once again, build our classifier on the training data and I'll put the build model just for the fun of it. Now we want to once again look at um, making predictions. First of all, we're going to sort of like look at what um, labels we have. And in this case, we're going to use this previously mentioned dot times that allows us for the number of values that the class attribute has from zero to times minus one. Um, and we are basically adding the string label to it, which we can then also output with a simple print line statement. And we are using the lists join method and we're joining basically all those elements in the list with a comma basically generating a comma separated string and once again using our um, times method by this time we'll be using the number of instances in the data set so for all the rows in the data we'll be basically calling the classifiers distribution for instance in order to retrieve the class distribution and then simply output what the class distribution is okay and when we're running this thing you will first see that it actually loads the whole thing into the jvm here on top it just outputs this is what we're loading and then after that you can see our j48 tree that we built on the training data and then we can have here our class labels and finally the class distributions for all the rows in the data Slightly different to Jython and Python Wicker Wrapper, but not too different. As the second script, we'll be looking at our putting multiple RC curves on the balance scale data again. Start from scratch. So once again, we have a bunch of imports that we need. Um, in this case, the aviation class again. We're going to use naive base as the classifier again. Um, the threshold curve um, which allows us to compute basically the ROC curves and so on um, data source for loading the data and once again we're going to use j3chart for the plotting okay first thing we're going to load the data in again using our environment variable sending class review as the last one we're going to instantiate our naive base once again there's no options necessary then 
we're going to cross validate it after initializing the vaccine validation object on the training data. We're going to do tenfold cross validation and once again using a seed value of one for a random number generator. Having that done, we can now then create our plot data set once again. It's just a simple XY data set again. And as you can see, we're going to use our dot times again. So basically for all, since we want to do multiple, uh, all the labels in the class, um, we can once again use the number of labels that we have in the class field dot times and use the iterator once again to retrieve the curve data, then retrieve um, the data from the false positive right column and the true positive right column, turn that basically into lists. And we're adding that then as a data series to our plot data set, including the ROC, the AUC area. Having done that, we can then create the plot, which is just an XY line chart, a simple one, and um, with axes of false positive right and true positive right. And as the last step as usual, we're going to create a frame, embed a chart panel with the plot, and make the whole thing visible. Okay, and when we run that, it takes a little while. And then we basically have our plot that we've already seen before. You've now basically seen quite a range of scripting languages that you can use on the Weka API, whether it is within the JVM or outside using Python itself. And last but not least, you also had some fun with a real world data challenge. And I hope you were but much, much better than I was. Okay, that's it for scripting. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you sometime. Bye-bye.